Hello everyone, in this video I want to talk about one of the biggest risks to everyone's health almost in the entire world which is heart disease, um, atherosclerosis, coronary artery disease uh, all these different kind of names for basically the same thing and the same disease process is really what leads to strokes it's what leads to diabetes it's what leads to a whole number of different problems and probably a lot more problems than we even know yet and fully understand and, uh, and that's the process of, of, of the disease of the arteries of the human body so there's a number of things to say and I know that a lot of people who are watching this channel already know about this stuff and don't really need to relearn this stuff and understand it but some of you might not fully understand it or you might you know you might fully believe a vegan diet or a raw vegan diet is better for you but you don't specifically know exactly why well the main threat to people's health um, that you actually have control over is, is the threat is chronic disease and chronic disease are diseases of lifestyle these are diseases that we know are contributed to by human lifestyle factors and the biggest factor contributing towards disease, disability, death in terms of chronic disease uh, chronic disease causation is your diet by far, by a million miles and to the extent that you can get everything else right in your health program, every single thing, your fitness, your mindset, your emotional component of it, your sleep, your uh, going out into nature, fulfilling your purpose, friendships, you can get all of this stuff right. If your diet is wrong, you might as well throw the rest of it out the window because you will still cause disease regardless of all the good other good factors that's how serious it is to get to get diet right the rest of it is not going to give you um, the same long-term benefit the rest of it will still give you benefit but it'll give you benefit up to the point that you develop disease and then it might help you cope with that better but you're still going to cause disease in your life and that's not that's not an option for me and I'm sure it's not an option for most people um, in terms of the history of this condition you know in terms of our awareness of it it's kind of interesting how we became more aware of this being a problem because obviously in, in going back into history diet lifestyle was much different and even now if you go to the poorer areas of the world coronary artery disease or heart disease does not really exist almost anywhere in, in places where people have a you know very simple basic kind of third world diet now the world's changing a lot and and even in poor countries they're starting to adopt more western habits but um, in the places where people are still you know legitimately in a, you know growing their own food and things like that and, and um, or, or basically just living on grains and vegetables and things and, and very simple diets these diseases don't exist um, diseases like heart disease kind of diseases so if we look into the history of this there's different stages where we saw and where gradually there was awareness within the scientific community firstly that there was something going on and the, the biggest thing that if you look into the history of it really was the fact that the, the comparison between different countries was so stark that there was obvious something was going on that heart disease um, was common in America and was growing in America in Europe in the Western countries and yet was basically not found in the poorer countries and so research was looked into as to what was causing this was it genetics was it uh, activity levels was all these other things and eventually the conclusion came that it was diet now the other thing about heart disease well let's let's start with this just the basic thing because obviously at first it was seen as a disease of old age something that happened to people when they were older and um, but it was happening in you know people that weren't as old 
and a researcher called Ansel Keys, who had been working with the US government during the Second World War. He developed the rations for the soldiers. He was a nutrition expert of the highest level. Decided to look at this and he, he gathered data from a bunch of countries looking at diet and trying to find a correlation between diet, the diet of those countries and the levels of heart disease in those countries. This is where it gets slightly controversial because he came up with a study called the Seven Countries Study and there are people in the low-carb movement, paleo, the carnivore, the people that like to encourage people to eat meat and you know low-carb diets. One of the things they say is that Ansel Keys was wrong and that he managed to fool all of science because he basically cherry-picked his data, which means taking information that that um, backs a hypothesis that you'd already started with. So it's kind of the opposite of what a scientist should do, which is to say we're going to study this and we have an idea that this might happen, but we're going to look at all the evidence and we're going to try and disprove it before we see if it's right, basically. Whereas this would be, we've got this idea and we're going to try and prove it's right, which is kind of wrong. So he only picked seven countries of all the countries that he looked at. But the truth is, if you look into it deeper, the reason that he cut out a whole bunch of countries was some of them had unreliable sources of data because they were poorer countries, didn't have as good uh, healthcare systems, and the data wasn't as reliable. But some of them had also been very affected because of World War II. So their diets had shifted hugely in World War II and therefore the data was not accurate as to what the diet of that country was generally. Um, so Norway is a good example of a country that during World War II went to a virtual vegetarian diet So there, and they were rationed and everything so the health outcomes were different. So the data wasn't really reflective of what Norway's diet was at the current time that the study was done. So those countries were left out, um, rightly so. But he selected seven countries with the best data uh, that hadn't had those changes, and wh what he found was a correlation between fat and heart disease. The, the amount of fat in the diet and heart disease, I'm not sure how long it took him to specifically see it as saturated fat was a problem. And, um, and, and he, so he came out with this, study and um, he started to obviously spread this information and obviously he was a well-known scientist so he was taken quite seriously and, and this information began slowly to get out there that, that, heart, that heart disease was being caused by saturated fat. Now he had critics at the time and this is another thing that some of the paleo people bring up that he had these critics that said he was wrong but those critics um, one, a group of the two guys called Yudashalmi and Hillabo, once again often brought up by the paleo movement, they didn't criticize him because he thought it was an animal based problem. They thought it might be animal protein rather than saturated fat that was a problem. So yes, he had critics, but most of them were aligned with the idea that it was definitely to do with uh, saturated fat or, or to do with animal products at least. Since that time, that hypothesis has been confirmed over and 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 over again. The amount of saturated fat in people's diet can be predictably linked to the level of cholesterol in people's blood, and the level of blood cholesterol is related to your threat of having a heart attack, of developing heart disease. That is absolutely clear. There is a consensus on that, and the only people that disagree with that are people who desperately, desperately want to believe that eating meat, eating animal products is good for you, when it's not, it causes heart disease. Now, it's not just in human beings that it causes heart disease. You've got to realize that in every single herbivorous animal, if you feed them a diet of animal products high in saturated fat, they will develop heart disease. Carnivores cannot get heart disease.
omnivores cannot get heart disease. Human beings can. It means that human beings are not carnivores and are not omnivores. It's one of the one of the big tests to prove that. So we kind of knew, okay, well, if you eat a lot of this bad diet over a lifetime, but maybe if you just cut it down a bit, it'll get rid of it. So the focus really became the idea of cutting down on saturated fat. And that's what that really led to and has led to over the years where we see that people switch from whole milk to skimmed milk people switch from butter to margarine and they've made these small little efforts but they're spreading the margarine on a bacon sandwich with eggs on it so it's not there's not really been a very serious decline in saturated fat in, in the diet um, but these things have made a small difference people change from lard to, to vegetable oils that is something that, that has happened that is a change that's been made as a result of that but it hasn't really made a big difference it hasn't really reduced or got rid of heart disease. Now, more research was done um, on this. When does this process start to happen? So, at what point does this heart disease start to form? Maybe in your 50s, 60s, 70s, something like that? Well, they tested, the, they did autopsies on Vietnam veterans or, or people soldiers that had died in Vietnam, mostly young men, they did autopsies. These were 17 year olds, 18 year olds, 19 year olds, some of them were very young. What they found was, I believe, 100% had the beginning stages of heart disease, of, of, of coronary artery disease, of the arteries being diseased and damaged due to saturated fat in the diet. It was unquestionable. Um, now since then, we've found that actually the process starts in children, younger than that. Once again, can't be questioned. This is happening right now to every child that eats a standard diet. Every child that goes to their school and eats you know, meat and potatoes and whatever their school serves them, they are developing heart disease. Every single one. And every single person you know that is on the standard diet has heart disease of some level or proportion, unless they're an absolute genetic freak and they have um, a genetically very low cholesterol, which is, a, which is actually a, a condition in itself, which some people do have. Um, and, and it does protect them, they do tend to live longer than the average person because they have genetically low cholesterol. There's Aubrey in the background. Um, so this is unquestionably happening to everyone we know that's not eating a healthier diet. It was happening to us before we ate a healthier diet. Um, I have memories of going to the gym and my heart beating strangely. I have memories of my heartbeat being weirdly irregular and when I changed my diet that changed and um, you know when we talk about when we're talking about heart disease coronary artery disease that's how it affects the heart but we've got to understand that it affects probably all organs of the body because it's damaging <coughs> the arteries it's damaging, it's creating plaques and starting to block and limit blood flow. The flow of blood, the flow of oxygen, the flow of energy is being blocked. And, and the amazing thing about this is there's zero panic about it. There's zero panic about it. Incredible. So, um, this is actually happening to people with every meal they eat more damage, more damage, more damage, more block, more blockage, more blockage. This is actually happening. Um, so this is one of the one re one of the main things for me. When people go away from a raw from a vegan or raw vegan or plant based diet and start eating meat again, I'm just like I'm just like but surely you realise you're gonna cause start causing disease massive damage to your arteries. Surely, surely you've learned that. 
And I started to realize a lot of them probably have not learned that, unfortunately. So if you want to stop massive damage being done to your body, to your arteries, a lack of blood flow all over your body, um, you need to take strong action. So what can we do to reverse or eliminate heart disease? Um, well, conventionally the idea is there's nothing that we can do and, and all we can do is, you know, get a heart bypass operation, take uh, stents and different things and, and blood thinning medication and all that kind of stuff. Because your, your body's made a mistake and it's made your blood too thick, that's the problem. You know, the, the body made a mistake. <clears throat> so we've got to force the body to, to, to uh, thin the blood. <clears throat> well, fortunately a number of studies have been done in this. And thankfully, we have, <clears throat> we have a solution for reversing heart disease. <clears throat> that means all those blockages can be reversed, can be got rid of, can be released. Um, and the way we do that is by doing one thing only, and that's changing diet. <clears throat> that means getting rid of all animal products from the diet. That means all fish, all meat, all lean meat, all eggs. It also means getting rid of other sources of processed saturated fat, <clears throat> like oils. Get rid of all vegetable oils. And it also means, if you really want to take it seriously, getting rid of, of all the whole plant food sources that are high in fat as well. Nuts, seeds, um, nuts and seeds primarily, nut butters, tahinis, all that kind of stuff. And, um, and probably keeping avocados pretty low as well. So getting rid of all that stuff and going on a diet of carbohydrate, whole food, plant food, carbohydrates, mostly fruits and vegetables. Um, technically, it does not have to be just fruits and vegetables. I would say that for transparency. However, um, but, the, but the main thing is to get rid of the, the saturated fat part component of the diet, the animal foods. And if a person is strict and does that, their body has the chance to heal and reverse heart disease. And this is something that has been proven. It's something that there's clinical science on. It's not something that is very mainstream yet as an idea. Uh, but we have to get that idea out to more people and we have to remember the, the seriousness of the situation. And one of the benefits to you if you go on a raw vegan diet or a vegan diet is is hopefully you will experience the massive impact of more blood flow and how that can actually change parts of your body or it can change hopefully the, the, the functioning of parts of your body, most importantly potentially your brain but also your heart and that you may actually feel the difference like I felt the difference in how my heart actually beats. Um, so it's an important thing to get out there. It's an important thing to fully understand, to, to understand that the science in this is not um, in any doubt. This is definitely, definitely the case. This is one of the reasons why moving away from a vegan diet would be a bad idea to me, a hugely bad idea, unless I just wanted my life to all be about consuming food rather than about all the other things it could be about. So thank you for watching today. I know this isn't new information to a lot of you, but for some of you, you maybe don't know that specifically clearly enough to realize this is one of the reasons that uh, you should continue with your, with your diet and with the changes that you're making. And feel free to pass this on to anyone you know who might be needing to hear this information. Thank you very much.